Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual science classroom. This is your teacher, da, teacher Daryl Del Mundo. Good morning to each and every one of you. And we are now going to tackle about week number two. But first and foremost, let us all pray. Thank you very much. And for our secretary, do not forget to check the attendance, get the number of boys and get the number of girls, and then send it to our group chat. Do not forget about it. Okay, so for our week number two, this is just a continuation on what we have tackled aside from locating places. So we are going to deal and dig deep on our Earth. It's like knowing Earth's natural resources. So ito yung mga likas na yaman natin. Papaano ba natin malalaman yung mga resources na meron tayo? So uh, this supplementary learning material will help you to learn about lesson number one, natural resources and its types. And for lesson number two, the importance of natural resources. So let us just have a look back or a review on what we have tackled last time. So we learned how to use latitude and longitude to locate places. And that's one of the two things that we can be able to locate places. Kumbaga, we can exactly know the place by knowing its latitude and longitude using its coordinates, right? So, meron din pa tayong iba pang paraan para malocate yung isang places. By what? Okay, by locating land masses and water forms near the country. So, kung alam natin yung mga land masses o yung mga anyong lupa na kontinente na malapit doon sa country na hinahanap natin at yung mga water forms, syempre, yung mga dagat, yung karagatan, sea or ocean, yun yung mga yun. So, uh, we wanted to find them and those became the landmarks. Okay? Those serves as the landmarks of that particular place. For example, we have here the Philippines. And if we wanted to locate the Philippines, we have first the landmass at the north, Hong Kong. Okay? Then, at its west, the Vietnam. And at its south, it's Indonesia. Wala tayo sa east kasi nandiyan ang Pacific Ocean. So, those are the land masses that can be found surrounded the Philippines. At the north, Hong Kong. At its west, Vietnam. And at the south, it's Indonesia. So let's look at the water forms that can be found in the Philippines so that we can locate it. Number one, we have the West Philippine Sea, or sometimes it is called South China Sea. West Philippine Sea, it is located at the west. Okay? Then we have Philippine Sea at the north. Then at its east is Pacific Ocean. Okay, so... If you located, for example, Pacific Ocean and you have West Philippine Sea and you also found the land masses like Hong Kong, Vietnam, and Indonesia, therefore, you got the Philippines already. You located the Philippines already. Okay? So, so with the help of land masses and water forms, we will be able to locate a specific place or location. So for our uh, review or looking back, all we have to do, these natural resources are used in production. So production of food, energy, and other manufacturing. Match each raw material or resource in column A and the good use to it in column B. Write only the letters of the correct answer. So we have column A for the resources. And then we have here column B for the uses. So all you have to do is to match column A to column B. Write the letters only. So for example, gold. We can say that gold can be used as jewelry, accessories, and dental materials. And another example, that's letter G for number one. And for number two, we have trees. So trees can be made into paper, furniture, or fuel. So that's letter E. So number one, G. Number two, letter E. And then do the rest. Okay? Wag kalimutan. And for lesson number one, we are going to tackle about natural resources and its types. So as a brief introduction, planet Earth is made up of different things like air, water, plants, animals, soil, 
rocks, minerals, crude oil, and other fossil fuels. These things are called natural resources because they are not made by people, rather they are gathered from nature itself. Sunlight and wind are also natural resources. We use all these things to survive or satisfy our needs. It is very vital for life forms, especially human beings. So this picture, it looks like a compilation of different natural resources in one that can be found inside the earth. Okay? And another thing, we are lucky here in the Philippines because the Philippines is considered rich in natural resources. We have fertile, arable lands, high diversity of plants and animals, extensive coastlines, and rich mineral deposits. We have natural gas, coal, and geothermal energy. Wind and water are also harnessed for electricity generation. So meron tayong mga, ano, okay, so meron tayong mga windmill, meron tayong mga water mill so that we can generate electricity since we are an archipelago. Pag sinabi natin archipelago, we are surrounded by water. That is why most of our natural resources came from the ocean or came from the water. So as you can see here in the map, most of our natural resources came from water. Okay, and since we are made up of different islands, how many islands? 7,641 islands. So we have a high diversion of plants and animals. Okay, and that's very good. And uh, what are the different types of natural resources? So there are two types of natural resources on Earth. So we have renewable and non-renewable. The question is, what is the difference between these two kinds of resources? Just look at this picture. So renewable and non-renewable energy sources. In renewable energy, you can get a hint here. We have solar, come from the sun, hydropower, come from water, biomass, came from living things, geothermal, came from the heat, from the ground. Then we have the wind, <clears throat> renewable. And on the other hand, we have non-renewable energy. We have oil, we have coal, we have nuclear, and we have natural gas. So I think you have something in your mind and you know already the difference between the two. And to know more, let us dig deep into each resources. So for renewable resources or renewable energy resources, the food people eat comes from plants and animals. Plants are replaced by new ones after each harvest. People also eat animals. Animals have the capacity to reproduce and are replaced when young animals are born. Water in a river or in a well may dry up. But when the rain comes in, the water is replaced. Plants and animals and water are resources that can be replaced. All the resources that can be replaced or napapalitan, they are renewable resources. Okay? Napapalitan. Alam naman natin, di ba? It can dry up like uh, a certain river can dry up or... A lake can dry up, but when it rains, it will be filled up again with water. So that's renewable. Nare replace kagad siya. Okay, like solar energy. Diba? Hindi mo pipigilan pag sikat ng araw. Then we have hydropower, come from water. Then we have biomass from living things. And then we have wind energy. When you go to Bangi, yan, pag punta kayo ng Bangi Ilocos Norte, there are a lot of windmills over there. And you should uh, go there. Because when I interviewed one of the citizen there or the locals there, one of their locals, uh, they said they have very low energy consumption or electricity consumption. I think they only paid 50 pesos or 100 pesos. Ang mura nun. And then we have geothermal energy. Since marami tayo dito mga vulkan sa Pilipinas, we can harness energy from geothermal. Okay. So those are renewable energy. Those energy or resources can be replaced. Do not forget that. And on the other hand, non-renewable energy resources are these examples. 
Most plants grow in topsoil. Rain and floods wash away topsoil. Can topsoil be replaced easily? Of course not. Soil comes from rocks and materials from dead plants and animals. It takes thousands of years for soil to form. So galing kasi siya sa bato, sa rocks, and with other living organisms. Soil cannot be replaced easily or it takes a very long time to replace. It is known as the non-renewable resources. So we have here fossil fuel from the word fossil. So those are the animals and plants that lived thousands, hundreds, thousands, and millions of years ago. Okay, then we have coal. Then we have natural gas. We have nuclear energy. So for any instance, uh, fossil fuel, yung mga nabuhay na animals before. And even the plants that lived thousands and millions of years ago, they died already and they become fossil fuels. Okay? So sila yung ginagamit natin ngayon, yung mga krudo, sa gasolina, kung bakit tayo nakakabili ng kuryente sa ibang bansa, it's because of the oil. Okay? Kaya sila nagdidig deep sa pinakamalalim na dagat, sa desyerto, at kung saan man, kasi they get the fossil fuel there. Saan nang galing? Sa mga dinosaurs, yan, sa mga plants, usually kapag animals, fossil fuels. Okay? Kapag naman plants, yung mga coal o yung mga ulim, pwede natin yung pagkunan din ng energy. But they are very limited because they cannot be replaced easily. Okay? Unlike ng sunlight, unlike ng water, unlike ng wind, they are unlimited, right? And they can be replaced. While non-renewable, they cannot be replaced easily. Okay? You need to wait for millions of years for you to get that fuel, fossil fuel again, for you to get that coal again. Okay? And next, why non-renewable is limited? So this is the reason. Metals like copper, iron, and aluminum are abundant on Earth. So, but people are using them very fast. Okay? So they have to dig deeper into the ground to get what they need. Coal, oil, and natural gas, those are the fossil fuels, were formed from plants and animals that lived on Earth millions of years ago. It takes millions of years for dead plants and animals to turn into fossil fuels. Soil, coal, oil, and natural gas are non-renewable resources. Kaya we should be able to become aware of the usage of everything. For example, metals. Galing yan sa mga bundok. Metals are part of rocks. They are ores. Kaya yung mga metals na yan, anong ginagawa dyan? The metals are being extracted from the rock. So they need to what? They need to destroy the part of that rock. Or maybe they came from mountains. And another thing, so we have coal, gas, and oil. So we need to be aware of how to use it wisely. Coal, gas, and oil. So kailangan natin magtipid, okay, as much as possible. And for lesson number two, the importance of natural resources. Why do we need to take care of them? And why do we need to be aware of the uses of it? We should know its importance. So why is it important? All resources used by humans, including fuels, metals, and buildings, or sometimes materials that we use for buildings, come from the earth. So many of these resources are not in endless supply. They are very limited. It has taken many thousands and millions of years to develop and accumulate these resources. So hindi basta-basta makakagawa tayo ng metal, hindi basta nagkakaroon ng coal, oil, natural gas, kerosene, propane, and all na ginagamit natin in everyday life. So we need to be aware when it comes to using this non-renewable resources. So kung malakas kayo gumamit ng gas, 
malakas kayo gumamit ng oil. Yan. So even uh, the electricity that you have there at home. Kasi binibili natin yung from the other country. Kaya mahal ang binabayaran natin sa Meralco. Okay, then we need to conserve our natural resources. We need to conserve and preserve because we only have one earth. To conserve natural resources is to protect or use them wisely without wasting them or using them up completely. Or we can say, do not abuse. Okay? Conserving natural resources can make them last and be available for future generations. This is what sustainability of natural resources means. Each one of us should think about how to make things sustainable. Remember, the lives of future generations depend on how we use natural resources today. So if you wanted for the next generation to see what the world looks like, then let us preserve our natural resources. Remember these things. Our natural resources must be preserved and conserved for the benefit of the present and the coming generations. In order to do so, let us learn to take care of our earth. And as we take care of our earth, what we need to do is be an earth warrior or be a birthier. Okay? Kailangan isa tayo sa mga nagtatanggol sa earth. Yes, uh, maybe millions and millions of years, Mars can be inhabitable by human beings, but as long as we are living, we only have one Earth to live, might as well, we should protect it and preserve it for the future generations. So all you have to do is to join different organizations or clubs in your school that helps to conserve and preserve the Earth. Participate in natural or in different national Earth Day around April, something like that. So kung alam mo yung National Earth Day, you can participate. So, you can join in Echo Service Club. So, if you wanted to join uh, also Earth Club in your school, you can do it so. And participate in Earth Day. I think all you have to do is to turn off everything. Something like that. Just for an hour. Yan. So, basically, papatayin mo lahat ng saksakan. Papatayin mo yung uh, switch mo ng kuryente. So that you will be able to conserve and preserve also the natural resources and even the earth. Okay? So do not forget to answer the following. Watch this video for you to be able to review and answer all the questions in your Google Classroom. So do not forget answers only. Take a picture of it, then attach it in your Google Classroom. For lesson number one, answer pages number three. For the pretest and page five, and for lesson number two, answer pages number six, seven to eight for post test. So if you want to ask something, if you have any clarifications, just contact me, and you can reach me through my social media accounts. And I hope you learned something today. And that's the end of our quarter four week number two. Let us be excited for the next week, and have a nice day. Goodbye. God bless and see you all next week, guys. Bye.